Tears of the Kingdom has taken the world by storm, and if you're thinking about playing it, you could maybe do with some advice. But don't worry, because I'm going to keep all 30 of the tips in this video completely spoiler free. I'm not going to ruin anything by showing you the endgame armor or the best weapons or anything like that. These are simple tips for questions that a lot of people have had. Let's get right to it. After the tutorial, follow the main quest. Don't start exploring immediately, because by following the main quest, which takes you to the central town in the game, you will obtain your paraglider. I have seen this question everywhere. It's really that simple. Just stay on the main path a little bit longer. Once you have your paraglider, you really want to try and head towards the northwest. This is for a lot of reasons. The first one I would say is that you want to go unlock the Lindor's Brow Tower. Around this area, there's a lot of stuff, and many tips will revolve around this small little area in the game, which is really important for the early game. For starters, you can take this through to Bantha Plains and walk towards a stable. This stable is not really a stable. It's called the Lucky Clover on your map once you reach it, and you can start a quest line. This quest line develops throughout the entire game every time you visit any other stable. So I think it's better to have it early on, so that as you progress naturally through the game, you can do these quests every time you reach a stable. While we are around the area of Lindor's Brow, if you want to already unlock the mechanic, which is going to let you expand your inventory, very similarly to how you could in Breath of the Wild, all you need to do is look around the hill where the Lindor's Brow Tower is. There's an event there, and that'll lead you to it. Another mechanic that a lot of people missed out on, and I did initially as well, is upgrading your armor. If you want to start this quest line, you're going to first need that Lucky Clover Gazette one from that stable. Once you have that unlocked, head over to the Woodland Stable, a little bit northeast of Hyrule Fields. If you're wondering what order to tackle the game in, if you come from Breath of the Wild, for fun I would recommend going in the opposite order of whatever you did there. But I'm pretty sure that the intended route to follow would be to first do the Northwest, then the North, then the East, and then the Southwest. So if you're looking for what I think is the intended path, I, that's probably the one. And once you do finish your first one out of four main quest, head back to the emergency shelter in the central town of Lookout Landing. You're going to find something really cool there. Speaking of cool content, caves are a really big deal in this game. Some can be small, but I would say most of them are quite big and include specific unique puzzles to them, combat scenarios, and even unique mini-bosses. If you want to explore as many caves as possible, just look for the bloopy, that is the little owl-like thing, although I like to call them bubble bunnies. You can shoot them and they will drop rupees, but even if you don't hit them, they will always run towards the nearest cave. In that cave, you can also find a bubble frog. Taking these down will have them transform into a bloopy and run away, leaving behind a bubble gem. A lot of people miss the first bubble frog in the cave during the Great Sky Island tutorial, but it's another collectible that will unlock something cool later on. Alternatively, if you don't have a good eye for bloopies, you can just find a cherry blossom tree, and if you leave any fruit in the bowl at the foot of the cherry blossom tree, that'll help you find some caves, trust me. Caves also contain some of the best armor in the game. Some of the favorites that return from Breath of the Wild can only be found in caves. So start exploring there. If I had to recommend one for the early game that will retain its usefulness throughout most of the game, if you see people dressed in mushroom clothing, Ask them. They might mark some caves on the map, leading to what they call treasures. For them, fashion, I guess. There is a cave immediately to the right after the bridge, heading towards Seren Stable, very close to the Lindor's Brow Tower. It's well hidden, but there's a very useful piece of armor in there. If you're looking at your ability wheel and you're worried that you don't have it filled out, don't worry, it's not that complicated. There is a side quest in Lookout Landing in the laboratory that you can follow. It's with a very short person. Follow that quest line and that will lead you to one of those abilities. And if you continue following it, you'll unlock some extra things related to it that you might miss from Breath of the Wild. In the same area that you have to go to complete that quest line, keep exploring. It's a pretty big area, if you know what I mean, but somewhere there, you'll encounter an event that will let you unlock the last ability. 
That last ability isn't that important. I actually think that the previous one is more important and a lot of people miss it since they just never go into town and talk to him. It's fine to find it organically, but if you're one of those people that's just bothered by seeing the wheel empty, this is where you should go. Likewise, if you're looking to improve your maximum energy capacity, your battery, it's a little bit complicated. You're going to need to give 100 crystallized energy to a steward construct. These are at processing plants. The two easy ones are in Nikoya Shrine at the Great Sky Islands, which you had to visit to get out, and the other one is just outside of Lookout Landing. If you deliver these guys 100 crystallized energy, they will increase your battery by one, which is one third of the little battery cell. You're wondering how to get 100 crystallized energy? You're going to need to mine zonite primarily. There are many places to mine zonite later on in the game, and you can trade that zonite at specific vendors, like the one you saw in the Great Sky Islands, and you will then trade it for crystallized energy or for zonite charges. You will probably be drowning in zonite, so the limitation will be more the vendor's refreshing than the amount of zonite itself. And if you're worried that the vendor in the Great Sky Islands doesn't have much, don't worry, in the same place that you mine the zonite, you can find vendors. So to sum that all up, you get zonite, you go to vendors, you get crystallized energy, and then you trade it in at the processing plant to get more battery charge. It's also worth mentioning that some of the bosses in a specific region of the game drop crystallized energy when you defeat them. So that's another way to get a little extra. Classic armors are in the game. You can get them by scanning amiibos, but you don't need to. You can also find them in a specific region of the game, if you know you know. On top of that, in the Great Sky Islands, you can get chests with treasure maps. Once you get them, they will immediately mark an X on your map that probably leads to one of these. These are more cosmetic than anything, they don't have anything special attached to them normally. But if you just really like how they look and you want to upgrade them, you're going to need star fragments. So keep an eye out for anything shining through the night sky, and if you see a column of light, go get that star fragment because you're going to need a lot of them if you want to upgrade your favorite armor. Also, this time you can catch them in midair. You can throw items. You don't need to attach everything to an arrow to launch it. You can just hold R as if you were going to throw your weapon and then hold up on the D-pad. Now you can select the item and Link will just throw it. This will come in very handy when exploring some parts of the map. If you're completely new to the games, you want to investigate anything that looks odd. Rock circles, lily pad circles, corks that are hanging, dandelions, small little trees, and yes, even rocks. Any rock, really. That's because it's probably a Korok, and you're probably gonna want those and their collectibles since they are very useful in gameplay. And now you can also have the permanent paranoia of having to lift up every single rock in Hyrule. I would recommend that you always carry some extra durable weapons and you fuse them with something blunt. This is to make the process of breaking barrels and boxes easier, although you can just lift them up with Ultra Hand and let them fall. Sometimes that's not consistent, especially with metal boxes. So keep one handy, and you never know if you're going to need it to clear out some rocks in a cave. Although, from my followers on TikTok, if you fuse a cannon to a spear, you can shoot the cannon. And this seems to be a very easy way of clearing rocks out in caves. So thank you to my TikTok followers, by the way, shameless plug. You can find stone octorocks in a region of the game, and they will repair a weapon. They can only do this once per Blood Moon cycle. There are a total of three of these. If there's just a weapon that you really, really want to keep using, or you just made something incredibly powerful, learn the positions of these octorocks just Look for them, throw your weapon on the ground, they will eat it up and return it to you, good as new, and with a buff, additionally. Speaking of which, don't be afraid to save and to test out crazy fusion ideas. That's half the fun in this game. I'm not gonna spoil anything beyond that spear cannon combo. I'm sure you've seen plenty of them online, even if you are avoiding spoilers. But if you're worried about it, just drop a manual save Fuse stuff and then reload in case you're worried about wasting your resources. But it truly is half the fun in this game. By the way, when you're repairing stuff at those stone octoroks, you, you forcibly have to think about this clip every time. Oh boy! I'm so 
so hungry, I could eat an Octorok. That's not a tip. It's just that every time I see an Octorok, I think of that and I don't want to be the only one. Holding something hot or cold is enough to change your temperature. So if you're in a particularly cold or hot region, you can hold a ruby rod or a sapphire rod and that will compensate for the temperature. You don't even need to use it, you just need to have it equipped. This also works for things like ice. Holding a ruby rod will just melt the ice around you. If you're looking to tow things with your horse, just keep visiting stables. You gotta collect them pony points. A lot of people that didn't watch the trailers, because they're avoiding spoilers, doesn't know that you should probably use recall on the falling rocks. You can use recall on basically anything that isn't alive, including attacks from a wide variety of enemies. So of course you can use it on the falling rocks from the sky to get a quick boost up and maybe survey the land a little bit better while you paraglide on down. Speaking of creative uses of the new powers, Ascend can be incredibly useful in a lot of situations, but as a basic tip, whenever you're exploring a cave, if you just want to get out, just ascend. Most of the time, the roof is low enough that you can ascend almost anywhere throughout the cave, and you'll come out somewhere interesting, probably. Although there are some caves that actually use ascend as a mechanic in their puzzles, but generally just use it more and you'll, you'll end up popping out somewhere. And my final tip is that Sunday Lions, or Sunday Lions, I don't know, when cooked, help with removing gloom. Do with that information what you will, quest related or not. I hope these tips help you on your journey through Hyrule. I've been Mug Thief, and remember that for every person who subscribes, somebody creates new fan art of Pura. I'll see you back here very soon with part two, Mild Spoilers Edition.